maps. So we are back for another map video. So today I have six maps for you. We have everything from population growth, so how has the population grown, and what is the projected population growth for 2050. I've got a map of places in the United States where like nobody lives. I've got a map of um, US population density by county, and then a couple other maps thrown in there. So let's check out some maps. So the first map we're going to look at is population growth by region. It is broken down into three different, different years, 1900, 2000, and 2050. So 2050 is the projection of what they think it's going to be um, in 2050. So in 1900, we're going to start in North America, we had 104 million people. In 2000, it was 486 million. And then the projection by 2050 is 679 million people. We're gonna move on to Europe. So in Europe in 1900, it was 407 million people. In 2000, it was 728 million. And in 2050, they're actually seeing, thinking it's going to shrink and it'll only be 704 million people. So this is looking like it's going to be the re only region that's going to shrink if the data continues the way it is. Moving on to Asia, the green in 1900 looks like it was 931 million people. And then in 2000, they had 3.7 billion people. And then the projected growth by 2050 is 5.3 billion people. But I have seen some projections with parts of Asia that even though their growth is going higher, it's not going to be enough to keep up with what they need. All right, moving on to South America. It looks like in 1990, they had 41 million people. In 2000, it was 350 million people. And then the projection by 2050 is 491 million people. Moving on to Africa. So Africa in 1900 had 131 million people. In 2000, Africa had 819 million people. And it is projected by 2050, Africa will have 2.5 billion people. And then we move on to Oceania little down here. So in 1900, they had 6 million people. In 2000, the Oceania area had 31 million, and then it is projected by 2050, they are gonna have 58 million people. So if you take all the numbers together, in 1900, there were about 1.628 billion people in the world. In 2000, it was six point, about 6.1 billion people, which was a 274% increase from 1900. And if it grows based off the map that's in front of me, then in 2050, there will be 9.7 billion people, which would be a 60% increase from 2000. So what do you think? Do you think the world's gonna grow like this map or do you think it's gonna be different? Let me know. The next map is most popular sports team by state. And let me say, this is just a fun map. There is no scientific research behind it and you might not agree and that's okay because there's a one on this map that I don't agree with, honestly. So here we go. So I think it's really interesting how things are localized, like the Cowboys are around Texas, except they kind of jet off into um, Nevada here. The Seahawks, the Vikings. So it seems like all the little areas kind of stay by their area. Um, I was a little surprised that in Hawaii it showed the heat where the heat is in Florida, I was thinking maybe it would be like a West Coast team. Um, Alaska up here with the Seahawks doesn't surprise me. You got Bronco Nation here, you got Cowboy Nation here, you got the Vikings, the Bears, the Bears here, um, Packers, Tigers. This is where I kind of get a little antsy. Eh, eh. All right, so I'm in West Virginia and we have a lot of Reds fans here. We really do, but they're kind of like on this part of the state. The upper part of the state are Pirates fans, unfortunately, but I'm in Reds country right here. Um, of course, you got the Braves and the Saints in the South. You've got the Carolina Panthers. You've got hockey. Um, you got hockey here. You got the Patriots. Um, so where do you live? What do you agree with what they say is the most popular sports team in your state? So the next map is when did the states become the states? So you can see that the little key here has everything broken down by a set of years, about depending on um, time range, you have anything from a the three-year range to a 10-year range to some 50-year ranges. Um, 
So the most of the East Coast here was part of the original um, colonies and then are the original states. Those are from 1787 to 1790. And you can see they have the years here, of course, Delaware, Delaware technically being the first state of the United States. Then you're going to have three states in this purple here. You're going to have Kentucky, Tennessee, and Vermont, which the time frame for them is, 19, or is 1791 to 1800. All right, then you're going to go into this 1801 to 1850 range, which is going to be um, most of the area around here. We're going to go down into Florida. We're going to jet out to California. Um, that would be part of the Compromise of 1850, getting California. And then you're also going to go up here in Maine, which became a state in 1820. So those were all added within a 50-year range. Then we're going to go to the brown area, which is most of the west out here. And then you have little West Virginia here because we broke off from Virginia um, in 1863 during the Civil War. So you're going to go to the next set of colors, which is this like light pink. You're going to have from 1901 to 1912, which is going to be Arizona, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. And then you're going to go all the way to 1959 to add um, Alaska and Hawaii. So where are you from and what year did your state become a state? All right, so the next map is U.S. population density by county. This is from 2020. So as you can see, the key down here is the lighter the area, the least number of people, the darker the area, the more people per square mile. So looking in the Midwest here, so we're going to start out here in the Midwest, you can see that there are a lot of these light, light counties. Those are just very rural counties, um, except for like Salt Lake here. And then you got like the Denver, Aurora area here. If we go to the West Coast, you are going to see some lighter counties up um, in like the bottom part of Oregon, the upper part of California here, like in Nevada area, um, Idaho. But you are going to have those big cities like Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, the L.A. area. I was going to call it the L.A. area. Um, and then down here, like in San Diego. So those are going to be those darker colors that have a really dense population. Um, moving on to the south region, um, like so Texas down here in the south, you will see some parts of Texas are going to have those light colors. They're just very spread out. You are going to have some of those bigger cities in Texas that are very densely populated, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. Going in farther into the south, you're going to have a lot of these like 100 and 500 um, people per square mile. Um, and then you're, of course, going to have like Atlanta, Memphis, Nashville that are very densely populated. Going into Florida, you're going to have like the Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville, Miami areas that are very densely populated. And of course, like New Orleans is very densely populated. Going into the East Coast, you are going to see a lot of these 100 to 500 again, just because that's how people are. Um, there's little like little communities throughout these areas, a lot of little communities. You're going to see like a lot of West Virginia. West Virginia doesn't even have anything that is over like the 500 people per square mile. It's just not how we roll here. But you do have some of the, the, um, the cities like Pittsburgh, Columbus, Cincinnati. Those are densely populated, especially here on the coast, like D.C. area, Baltimore, um, New York, Philly, Boston. And then you go up here into like the Great Lakes area. Of course, you're going to have like Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit that are very densely populated. But like a lot of the West and the East Coast that's not right at the big cities, you're going to have these 100 to 500 um, people per square mile counties. So where do you live? How densely populated is your county? My county on the map is one of the about 500 people or less per square mile counties. So what is yours? So the next map is this really cool picture of where the world's ports are. Um, I really think maps like this put things into perspective. So you can see, of course, like the ports of the world are along the edges of the countries on the coastline. Um, as you can see, like here in Europe, they are, it's really, really bright. You're gonna have parts of like Africa, South America that don't have anything. Um, over here, like Japan and these areas of China, um, down here in Southeast Asia, you can almost completely see the outline of Australia. And then you also have the United States, of course. You have, so I'm going to zoom in, 
all these ports on the Great Lakes. You've got the North Coast or the East Coast. You've got the West Coast. And then you're going to actually see a couple little dots like in here and then some little dots in like South America. Those are big cities on like big rivers. So this would be about the line where like the Mississippi River is. So I just love um, maps like this that show where things are in a different way. And then our final map is the Nobody Lives Here map. So this map is the 4,871,270 U.S. census blocks that have zero population. This was from 2020. So before I dive in, I'm going to tell you what a census block is. I did have to look this up myself. So they are a statistical area bound by visible features such as roads, streams, and railroad tracks, and non-visible features such as property lines, um, cities, townships, and school districts. Generally, it is a small area. Like they said, in a city, it is going to look like a city block bound um, on all sides by streets. Um, census blocks in suburban and rural areas may be larger, irregular, and bound by um, various features such as roads, streams, and transport transmission lines. So there is really no set boundary on what the census blocks looks like, but here we go. So we're going to go down here to the nobody lives in this area first. So as you can see here in Hawaii, you're going to have some green that are in kind of like the middle of the islands. The most of the population in Hawaii does live on the outskirts of the islands. The green is very not populated. Alaska, of course, you're going to have a lot of Alaska that doesn't have anybody in their census blocks just because of how Alaska is. Um, so you can see like a lot of these islands out here. You have a lot of the upper, um, the northern Alaska, northwestern Alaska here, just as this green with no, with very rarely a dot of white in it. If we move up to the United States, you're gonna see that the Rocky Mountain area has a lot of this nobody lives here green. Um, you're gonna see like down even on the coast or on the um, border here with Mexico, you're gonna have a lot of this nobody lives here green. In the Midwest, you've got some green, it's not as dark and pronounced as it is um, in the Rocky Mountain area. Up here on the Great Lakes area, you do have a little bit of that nobody lives here green. Same thing up in um, like New York here, in Maine here. Um, this part of um, the Pennsylvania area, which is in the Appalachian Mountains. So you're going to have some specks of green here, which is the nobody lives here, which that is all in the Appalachian Mountain range. Um, no, you got the green here down in like the swampy areas of like Louisiana, the swampy um, marshy areas in Florida and on the coast here. So. Based off what you can see on the map, do you live in or close to a nobody lives here area? If you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more videos like this one, please like, subscribe, and comment below with something you learned today or maybe you have a map you want me to add to a future video. See you next time.